Welcome to Connect the Dots, a podcast where we unlock the stories that connect each and every one of us. Hosted by me, Zach Day, in partnership with Connect Nashville. How do you connect? How do you connect? Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode of Connect the Dots podcast with me, Zach Day. Coming to you live this week from Phoenix, Arizona, the beautiful Connect Phoenix. I love it here. I've been here for a few weeks now. It's been amazing. Um, So if you guys are ever in the mood to take a little vacation and go to Phoenix or go to the Grand Canyon or Sedona, I recommend coming through here and checking out Connect Phoenix because you can actually stay here. They have hoteling options. It's awesome. Um, But this is my first virtual zoom like podcast episode because i'm interviewing someone today who has spent a lot of time at the connect nashville location brett kenny is here with me today hey brett how you doing hey it's good to be here (laughs) good good to have you um yeah brett does a lot of cool stuff with connect um but mostly the boxing classes that we have there brett is a coach for the people that are residents at Connect Nashville and has helped us a lot and just has a really interesting story. And I'm all about people who are going to be able to come on here and just share their story with us and how they ended up at Connect or how they ended up getting connected to the people there, no pun intended. Um, So, Brett, um, I'd love it if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us the rundown for those of you who may not know who Brett is. I'm going to let him introduce himself here. Okay. Uh, let's see. My name is Brett Kenny, and uh, like everybody else in Nashville, I am a transplant. Uh, I was born and raised in a Sacramento, California area. Um, got shipped off against my will to the University of Arkansas. And then once I graduated uh, from Arkansas, kind of work brought me to Tennessee, and then I've more or less been here ever since. Um, nice. With the boxing saw that probably made you a little bit of that. It kind of gave you a little bit of that Southern culture. (laughs) Yes. Um, It was, it was definitely, as you can imagine, going from California to Arkansas, a culture shock. So it was, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult probably for about the first year to, um, you know, kind of get your own circle of friends and so forth, uh, while adjusting to living on my own for the first time and the academic part. Um, so even though there were times I wanted to come home and, and got a little depressed probably while doing it, looking back, it was a really good, um, kind of life lesson because after doing that, I kind of felt that I could be shipped anywhere in the country and kind of, you know, uh, survive and thrive. So you'd be okay. You'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good in, in that regard. Right. I understand that too. I mean, like I, um, just coming from Kentucky and then moving to like Nashville, that was like a big change for me just because it was such a city and I'm used to like being yeah. on a farm. So that was big. And then I lived in LA for a while too. And so like being from going to LA from where I'm from, yeah, huge difference. So the, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. And then you ended up in Tennessee. So yep. that's amazing. And now you're and you're in Nashville now, right? Yeah. And I've been in Nashville for about 17 years. And so I've been uh, witness to a lot of the changes that have really happened and accelerated really within the last 20 years to the city. So it's been uh, pretty cool to see it evolve and kind of change and uh, become one of the quote unquote, you know, hottest cities in America. So uh, that's, uh, that's been really interesting and kind of fun to be a part of. Yeah. Now I guess Nashville feel like home to you or are you still like, you know, do you still get to go to California and visit family or what? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it somewhat does. Uh, when I go back to California, I left when I was 19, even though the craziness and, uh, kind of all the tumult in, uh, California, it'll always feel like home is there's a lot of nostalgic when I go back, I can still see some of the, um, you know, same street, same houses where my friends lived at and so forth. So, um, that's cool. <laughs> uh, and, what city did you say it was again? San, San Diego? Or San Francisco? Uh, it was right outside of Sacramento, California. Sacramento. So kind of right in the Valley, Northern California. Nice. Oh my God. It's beautiful up there. I've, I haven't been up there yet. So I'm like, I want to know. 
Yeah, and uh, I really enjoyed it, especially uh, the weather. Weather is probably you know, the number one thing that I miss because – I really don't like the humidity that much. And <laughs> if you like the outdoors and just natural beauty, uh, Sacramento was situated perfectly. It's right in the valley. You're two hours away from the mountains, two hours away from the coast. Uh, so it was really cool growing up there. Yeah, it seems beautiful. I mean, I love hiking and camping and I'm just like, oh, I got to go to Northern California sometime soon. That is definitely on my uh, to-do list. Um so let's talk a little bit about how you kind of started getting involved in, I guess you could say fitness or sports mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, when you were growing up and, and stuff, even when you were living in California, were you always involved in like sports and fitness and physical activity or, or what? Yeah, I grew up, uh, more or less playing sports, um, I, I kind of found that uh, I kind of had some difficulties at home and I've always felt that being on the playing field or doing some type of sports was a good way for me to um, kind of get out some aggression and some anger and some personal uh, things that I had and kind of occupy my time a whole lot. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and then kind of with the boxing thing is that's when I kind of got first exposed uh, to boxing right around when I was uh, about 16 or so in high school. And uh, so more or less when I was in um, California, um, you know, uh, basketball, you know, track, um, baseball, soccer, and so forth. So every season I'd kind of have something to occupy my time with. And so I had my first kind of uh, taste of boxing, uh, then kind of enjoyed it. Uh, and then um, once I got uh, back to Tennessee, uh, one of the things that I kind of uh, looked at after I graduated with one field, um, I kind of looked at going back to school and becoming a coach because that's one thing I enjoyed working with kids and I enjoyed uh, the sports. And so I thought that would be a, a pretty good marriage right there. Yeah. So... Um, while working and while, um, living in, uh, actually right outside of Memphis at that time, I went back to school at the university of Memphis, kind of pursuing my master's degree and getting my teaching certificate. And, uh, then I started teaching a little bit, uh, and found out it was kind of real difficult to get a secondary physical education job. Uh, that's where um, you could be either at middle school or high school and then kind of get your way into sports. Right. And around that time also, I had some uh, kind of personal uh, difficulties. I went through a divorce and um, a few years later, I moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee and been here for 17 going on 18 years. Amazing. So, um, when you got to Nashville, um, were you still doing some boxing like and physical activity outside of your job? Um, not really. Uh, I started with work and, uh, after a couple of years, I started working with a lot of at risk youth and, uh, you know, kids that, uh, kind of were a little bit similar to me growing up. And at that same time, I was getting back into boxing for physical fitness kind of reasons and so forth. And so after uh, kind of doing that for a little bit, I just figured, well, um, you know, kind of the coach in me just kind of thought, well, I want to try to uh, integrate some of the kids that I've been working with to the boxing gym and then spoke to the head coach there, and then I started a youth program. That's so cool. So I guess, um, was it like, I guess you probably were working with these kids, and you're like, you know what, I could, I could really, like, coach them into becoming, like, really good athletes and boxers, and, like, kind of, like you said, like, it provides a bit of a distraction from whatever may be going on at home or um, – you know, whatever else 
personally might be going on, um, it's such a good good way to get some exercise in and get your mind off of whatever is holding you down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so would you just des- would you describe would you say that you have a coaching philosophy or something that you kind of use? in your everyday life when you're coaching these kids, like a mantra or just a, just an outlook on your perspective? Yeah. Most of it was uh, trying to channel um, negative emotions into something positive or something that could kind of combat a lot of the stuff. I was a real uh, believer in just, um, you know, the physical fitness part, and especially kind of with the boxing part, I saw that kids kind of on the opposite spectrum of the behavior and so forth of, of the kids I was dealing with, you dealt with on one side, a lot of kids with anger and emotional issues that would uh, get in fights and stuff like that, get uh, kicked out of school, uh, end up in uh, juvenile detention, And then you had kids on the other end that experienced bullying, had low self-esteem, maybe were a little bit out of shape. And I found out for those extremes, it worked uh, really good. And it kind of made me feel good too, kind of seeing the progress and and just seeing the change um, that happened with some of the kids. Like I've been doing it for for 12 years. And, um, I remember a lot of the kids that I would get were in middle school. Um, and, uh, I had several that were in the program from middle school to high school. And then, uh, usually when they graduated, uh, they would either move off for work, maybe join the military, um, get a job, uh, find, uh, a girlfriend, you know, be more interested in girls. And so, yeah. They, we usually kind of parted once they became uh, adults. But I had kids that were probably five or six years that I worked with. Wow. Um, when you were doing the uh, – when you were training the, the kids, were they also doing, like, matches and, like, competitions? I don't really know how, like, that works. Yes. But <laughs> yes. That's cool. Yeah, tell, tell me a little, little bit more about that because I know, like, we had a fitness instructor on the podcast not too long ago. She's, like, a personal trainer. And she also competed in like strong, strong man competitions mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And so she, as far as like being a physical, like trainer, a personal trainer, she was also a competitor herself. So I was just kind of curious if like, yes, you had any, in, it, yeah, with that competition yeah. stuff. Okay. Um, I'm a former amateur boxer and I've had um, uh, several competitive matches. And when I first start, uh, I didn't do so well. Actually, I lost my, my first two matches. But uh, at the end of, of my boxing career, I ended up um, winning a tournament, a regional tournament. Um, so that was really good to kind of see my uh, confidence change uh, throughout this. And um, just having that um, you know, kind of desire for competition and really enjoying that part. I had um, several kids um, end up being uh, youth boxers and competing and having matches and, and being pretty successful. And so usually within my classes, I would have, um, you know, most of them would kind of do it just for uh, fitness, you know, kind of learn technique and, and work up to kind of some sparring. And a lot of kids were Uh, they would enjoy that, but I'd have some of them that really looked to go to that extra step and wanted to kind of compete. And, um, so I had, um, I would say over a dozen probably in the years that I was there. And, um, a couple of them, um, ended up pretty good. And a lot of times once they got to a certain level, um, I would hand them off to uh, the head coach that would spend a little bit more individual time with them, and I'd kind of stick to my classes. Okay. Um, and then these days, are you so so? These days, do you do like some coaching and, and training and classes and stuff like that still? Like like you do at Connect? Yeah, I still um, train and and coach at my at uh, Music City Boxing the. Uh, boxing club, which I've been out for probably about 12 years or so. Um, 
my classes uh, in the junior program has kind of changed a little bit uh, since COVID. And so now it's more of a just a few kids that I work with and the few kids that I do are aspiring uh, competitive boxers. And um, from there, while doing that, um, a friend reached out to me and told me the opportunity uh, that Connect had. They were looking to kind of expand some of their uh, classes. And yeah. one of the classes that it seemed a lot of the members expressed interest was in boxing. So one thing led to another. I was connected. And next thing I know, I was doing boxing classes every Wednesday. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool because at, at the Nashville location, we have a bunch of, um, what is it called? Bags? A heavy bags? bags? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, seen, I've never done boxing yet. <laughs> I want to. I would love to, but I don't know much about it. But yeah, we have a bunch of them there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I mean, they definitely need to have some boxing mm -hmm. classes there. And I think yeah. they also have some like hit training kind of classes. They've got mm -hmm. yoga classes. They've got all kinds of stuff there. So um, perfect. I mean, I'm so glad that they, they called you and had you come over. Um, have you, like in your career, as far as being a coach and a trainer, have you noticed, um, you know, differences in, in different people, like their approach to boxing and like, have you had to tailor the way that you train people? Cause I feel like it could be different for every person. I'm sure it's, you know, this person might need a different technique than this person. I'd like mm -hmm. to hear about your approach to that as well. Yeah. A lot of, I'm really big and a lot of, uh, kind of the, the fundamentals and everything and, and taking kind of someone that may have some experience or may, may have seen a couple of videos on YouTube and kind of starting them, uh, from scratch because I'm a big believer in, uh, building them from the ground up, focusing a lot kind of on your feet and on your balance. And so that's one thing that I'm real big on because once they develop that foundation, they can have a little bit, it's a little bit more fun and enjoyable because they can kind of do the boxing and they can uh, either do it longer, do it more effective, add uh, different combinations, defense, and do a lot more things once you feel comfortable and once you have that balance and that technique down. It's kind of like golf. Um, once you start with golf, it, you're going to be terrible, but the more you kind of learn the basics, almost like any other sport, the more enjoyable it is. Yeah. Like, I guess you're not going to come into it and just immediately be really good. No. At it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Like a lot that. of, a lot of the athletic stuff, you know, you can come in and, um, it's, it's maybe a little bit easier if you're naturally strong, naturally fast and so forth. But with boxing, there's actually a whole lot of technique and, and, uh, technical stuff. And that's why they call it the, the sweet science. And, mm. um, and I've actually found that it's a little bit easier to teach, uh, girls and women than boys because, uh, yeah, because boys will come in or men and they'll have kind of some, Oh, well, I've seen this and I know this and, and, um, they feel a little bit more confident in what they do, but, um, they turn out that their technique is kind of bad. And so I'll kind of show them kind of, okay, this is how uh, we punch. This is how we move our feet and so forth. And they'll kind of take half of that in and kind of freestyle the other side. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but with the girls and the women, you show them a technique and they will do it exactly. They won't deviate from it or try to freestyle. And mm -hmm. so, um, they're a lot more diligent when it comes to, to training. And I've had, uh, even at connect, um, I've had a couple that have been coming, I would say maybe about eight classes, but the difference in when they first came to, uh, how they are now in the classes because I just had them yesterday has been kind of night and day and they can start doing partner drills, uh, with themselves instead of me constantly looking over the shoulder to correct them and everything. And it's, it seems like it's a lot more enjoyable for them. So, um, and plus it seems pretty cool that they come as a couple It's something they can both do. And, right. um, but how I tailor uh, a lot of my classes is, 
And I tell people, you don't have to have any experience. Um, don't even worry about equipment. I've got all the equipment. And uh, we just kind of go from there. And uh, the popularity of it, um, uh, we kind of have an RSVP type of thing. And the cap is uh, eight uh, just because we got limited space. And a lot of times... If you have a group of, let's say, six that have been doing it for a while and got some of the basics, and then a couple of new people start, it's kind of difficult to integrate and keep the more experienced boxers, um, you know, uh, having fun and challenging themselves because you've got to work on um, some newer people that need help from day one. Uh, right. So... It's also kind of moved into now we do a second class on Saturdays, and that's more if we call it a box fit. You you talked about kind of the uh, <clears throat> circuit training and so yeah. forth. So it's probably about half boxing, and it's not so much on technique. And then the other half is a lot of strength and conditioning training. So it's more of a circuit-based training because I think just with uh, something that's boxing um, – some of the you know, some of the girls or women might be a little bit turned off and a little bit intimidated by it, but I think with the box fit, it seems like it's not that intimidating if you have no experience because it's a good mixture of um, strength and conditioning and core training along with the boxing. That's cool. Yeah, I think that it could be a really good way to just like introduce something new to your fitness routine, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like if you're, if you're used to just going to the gym and lifting weights or running or whatever you do, and then it's like, oh, but you know what, if I could learn some of these boxing techniques or just, just different ways to, you know, just, just get, get something new into it. Cause I, I don't know, I get bored when I go to the gym and do the same yeah. thing every, every day. I'm like, I want to do something, something new, something yeah. different. So yeah, I hope I can take one of those classes sometime. Maybe next time I'm in Nashville, I can I can do that because they don't have that here at Phoenix yet. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. convince them into getting that here. Um, that's really interesting. I was wondering if you had any um, stories, maybe like an inspiring story or something. You don't have to use anything specific like names or anything like that, of course. But I didn't know if maybe there was like a story from, you know, your coaching experience where you've seen someone go from like maybe – you know, I don't know, go from one thing to maybe really good. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, you know, going back to uh, the youth program at Music City Boxing, the person that had been there the longest was a, um, a female, um, a female Hispanic girl named Jackie. Uh, and she started, I want to say when she's about seventh, maybe eighth grade and was real kind of shy but she was pretty good athletically. I think she played a little bit of soccer before. Um, her English was was kind of uh, it was kind of decent. Um, but over the course of the years, she stayed with me all the way until she graduated as a senior. And I think she graduated with really good grades and um, just felt a lot more comfortable about herself. Her um, her English really improved. And the next thing you know, um, she went to uh, MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University, and um, got in their nursing program. And so I just thought that was really cool, just remembering kind of where she started from to where she ended up. Um, I'd like to think that the boxing training had a little bit um, kind of impact on her because I know it really changed her confidence a while, just remembering the young girl that came in uh, seventh, eighth grade to the person that graduated as a senior. It was, yeah. um, it was pretty cool. That is, that's amazing. Um, just a couple more questions for you. Um, I'm curious about boxing and physical safety. Um, how do you mm -hmm. approach like injury prevention and recovery and stuff like that? Because like it is, it can be intimidating because when, when I think of boxing, sometimes you can think of people like with their teeth getting knocked out or like blood and like, you know, all yeah. that stuff. So that, that's kind of the intimidating part for someone yeah. like me. <laughs> well, the biggest thing that I emphasize in all my classes, um, you know, always right when I started, it's basically no contact boxing. So there's no contact, meaning no sparring or 
having to worry about getting hit or hitting another person okay. until they're ready that I think they're ready. They think they're ready and their parents are fine with them kind of graduating into sparring drills and ultimately competing. But it's never something that happens, you know, day one, week one, month one, and sometimes not even year one. So it's mostly on kind of the, um, the training that you see hitting the heavy bags, jumping rope, shadow boxing, doing footwork drills, doing a lot of uh, partner drills, mitt drills, and so forth, that you're, you're working your hands and your feet, but you're not having to worry about getting hit back. And so okay. that's one thing I always emphasize. And um, I bring uh, my own gloves to the gym. And so all the gloves that I bring are they got their quality gloves and they got um, enough padding there and I've got different sizes and I always emphasize to the boxers to I said it's not required but highly recommended to get your own hand wraps to give you an extra layer of protection on your knuckles and your wrists yeah but so far um, I haven't had any uh, significant injuries or anybody really uh, hurt their hurt their hands or hurt their wrists so far uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of technique involved in that too. I mean, of course, by the time you're actually in a match, you've probably trained enough to like know proper techniques and you're not just getting going in there, just throwing yeah. punches or anything like that, you know? Um, what's your stance on the importance of diet and nutrition when it comes to boxing, if you're going to do it competitively? Right. I always tell people you can't outwork a bad diet. Yeah. And so, I, well, matter of fact, I've got um, a boxer right now that I'm working with, and he is chomping at the bit to compete and to get in there and get matches and everything. And I had to kind of rein him in a lot. And he was really, when he started, I said, you're probably at least uh, 10 pounds or 15 pounds too heavy because so much of boxing is weight classes, kind of like wrestling. Yeah. And um, he slowly, you know, started uh, dropping weight uh, just through training. But it wasn't till he really made progress until he kind of cleaned up his diet until I told him as much as you're passionate about what you do in the gym. I said, that's only 50 percent of it. The other 50 percent is going to come outside the gym and what you put into your body. And so since he finally kind of realized that, that he dropped some weight, he's in better shape now. Um, and plus he's kind of in the proper weight class before he, he goes and competes. But uh, the nutrition aspect is, is awesome because a lot of some of the kids that I work with, especially the more uh, underprivileged one, they have no idea of, of what's good and what's um, quality nutrition. Yeah. Um, quality nutrition to them is, is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, you know, things like that until yeah. they're really introduced to fruits and vegetables and cleaner food. But that's one thing I always would say. You can't outwork a bad diet. Yeah, definitely. Preaching to the choir here because I'm like, I love to work out, but I also love to <laughs> yeah, eat. Right, so I got to right. find, <laughs> find that happy medium. Um, well, speaking of that happy medium or that 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 place in between. Um, something that I love to ask people when they come on the show is just like, I find it very important to have a good, healthy work-life balance. Um, I know you're very busy. You're doing all kinds of different stuff all the time, but what do you do when it's the end of the day or when you need to find some time to just like relax? How do you relax? How do you find that time to just unplug for a little bit? Well, thankfully I have a really awesome wife where um, when I'm done, you know, at the gym and come home that, um, I really go into from my work mode to from my coach mode to husband mode. And so, um, I do a lot of other things to kind of, uh, help me relax. Um, you know, I read my Bible a whole lot. My faith is, uh, very strong. I kind of turn to that. And I also got a little bit of creative outlets. I, like to do some painting. And so, uh, I do a lot of that to relax, listen to music, read. And so I think of getting that, um, something that can kind of 
calm your body. My uh, wife is huge into yoga. And so she's even had me try that a couple of times Oh yeah, about pulled a hamstring, but, <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that, I think are critically important to kind of connect with yourself and, um, you know, uh, have a little bit of, of me time in a positive yeah. way. 100%. That's, I mean, like, cause you can burn out so easily if you are just constantly going, I mean, and that's, that took me a long time to figure out because I'm kind of constantly going, 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 going. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I can't even take another minute of this. I need to like just read a book or yeah. go for a walk or listen to a podcast or whatever. I have different ways mm -hmm. too, but, um, yeah, lately I've been like cooking, which has been yeah. really fun. I'm baking, I guess has been, so I'll just like bake cookies and that's kind of like, okay, I don't have to be constantly on my phone. I just can look at like a recipe and, mm -hmm. just, you know, it's just kind of like meditative, you know? Yes, um, absolutely. And, uh, I, I also speaking of food, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you've been in Nashville for a while now. Do you have any favorite, excuse me, like restaurants or favorite things to do in Nashville that, you know, you can recommend to people who may be coming to Nashville, like looking for some good food or good drinks or good environment. Um, anything in Nashville that stands out to you that you recommend? Well, Nashville is known for its hot chicken. And uh, there's probably uh, a few places that kind of vie for the top hot chicken place. But it's mm -hmm. something as you go to Nashville, you have to experience. Uh, there's a place called Hattie Bee's. That's um, really awesome. Uh, okay. They have uh, some barbecue places. There's a, a great one downtown called Martin's. Yeah. And um, uh, there's a few, uh, you know, kind of hole in the wall place. There's also a, a really, really cool place to kind of um, eat, to kind of have beverages. They have live music and some games called Sunny's. Okay. Uh, a little bit off of uh, downtown, kind of north of of uh, Broadway and everything. Is that like S U N N Y or uh, S O N N Y? Sunnies, uh, okay. Sunnies, and along with another one, uh, Jonathan's. It seems like there's people's names, but Jonathan's right. and and Sunnies are probably our uh, go to places. Okay, nice. Good to know. I haven't been to either of those. I've been to Hattie B's. It's delicious. And yeah. I like their mac and cheese, but, um, mm -hmm. and then I also like, um, have you been to Smoke and Thighs? Yes. Forever? yes. I like that place mm -hmm. too. It's good. Um, oh, okay. yeah. And, and then there's one, if anybody is visiting from out of town, they want a real good Southern experience. Write this down. Monell's. M-O-N-E-L-L-S. Okay. It's kind of a great hybrid of just old fashioned, um, you know, breakfast and brunch, you know, that your grandma would make, you know, kind of fused with some uh, soul food. And it is really excellent. Okay. Um, they have the family style table. So you kind of, you know, come in as strangers and leave as friends. Right. It's, it's, yeah. It's uh, highly recommended. Monel's. Amazing. Okay. Good to know. I'm sure I've got to go check that out. Haven't been there yet either. So that's awesome. Okay. Well, Brett, that's really all of the questions I have for you today about everything going on in the world of Brett Kinney. Um, if you don't mind, again, just share with us when your, your classes at connect are, and if you have any social media or a website or anything that people can reach out to you directly and you want to share that, please go ahead and do that as well. Okay, uh, the classes are at 6.30 on Wednesdays, and that's kind of like an introduction to boxing uh, class. That's a little bit more heavy kind of on the boxing side. And then on Saturdays at 10 a.m., there's the box fit class. That's the one that's kind of a hybrid of a circuit training and a little bit of boxing to uh, both of the classes. Uh, they're scheduled for an hour, but we always kind of run over. It's about an hour and 15, sometimes an hour and 20 minutes. But of course, you can leave whenever. And uh, it seems like the feedback that I've got um, is pretty positive and everybody's liked it. And I figure since they asked me to do a second class that everybody seems to be enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I 
don't really, uh, I do have an Instagram page. I think that I occasionally use, <laughs> um, I, and, uh, so, uh, being a little bit older, I, I don't really do social media as much. <laughs> so <okay. laughs> I, I, I think the best way, um, you know, uh, I can always be connected through, uh, the connect, um, uh, media relations or, uh, different people that they have there. If someone definitely. wanted to reach out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if someone wanted to reach out, they could just always send us a message. Over yeah, to connect absolutely. Or just come see you at the gym on Wednesdays or Saturdays. I'm sure you'll be there. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that's going to do it for us today over here at connect the dots podcast. Don't forget to check out at connect Nashville and at connect Phoenix on Instagram and Yeah, I'm Zach Day at You Know Zach. Until next time, we'll see you later.